This video is brought to you by Storyblocks for a low-cost subscription to unlimited royalty-free assets for your next production. Visit storyblocks.com slash Ted Forbes. Welcome back everyone. In this video, I want to talk about the concept of perfection. Perfection is something that we all obviously strive for. We all know that it doesn't actually exist. You'll never be completely perfect on every level. And I think this is an interesting topic to explore because I have some thoughts on this that I've at least tried to apply to the work that I do. And I'll give you some examples here as we go along. But perfection is an interesting topic for sure. And you know, I know that there's a wide range of photographers who watch these videos. Some of you probably work as wedding photographers. Some of you probably work commercial photography. Some of you probably are not professional at all, but you love photography, you shoot for yourself, you do artwork, whatever that is. And I know that there's a broad range, but I guarantee you on any of those levels, everybody is dealing with this idea of perfection. So for instance, if you're a wedding photographer, I have the utmost respect for you because that was not for me, but I do know in the couple weddings that I did shoot before I made that decision that it requires an enormous amount of planning up front. It involves an enormous amount of coordination, an enormous amount of collaboration. There's a lot that you have to do to go into it. And then once the wedding is actually happening, you have to be able to react to things that don't go as planned. And so that's kind of where we're going with all this because this is really interesting to me. As much as we can't control perfection, we can almost embrace it on some level. Maybe perfection is not really the right word for that, but you know, in the years that I've made these videos and done this show, I've had the incredible fortune of meeting some of my heroes, some of the photographers and artists that I look up to. And I've talked about this in videos before, but there is a common thread that runs between people who end up being very good, they operate on a very high level, and they are successful. And that is extreme confidence, first of all. And two, I think it's an ability to kind of deal with what you're dealt, so to speak. And so when we think of this idea of perfection, the fact that we're going for something, there's something in mind that we have to do, and the fact that it's not always attainable. In fact, I would even argue it's probably never attainable, but I think what separates people is at least having the illusion that you were able to do it because you were able to react to something in the moment. Years ago, when I was starting out, there was a photographer out of Dallas that I used to do some work with. This was early on in the internet, and I was helping put together a website and some stuff, and I really looked up to him. I loved his work, and he did a lot of, this was kind of pre-internet really. A lot of the stuff that we were all of a sudden putting on his website was stuff he had done for annual reports. He was a very successful commercial photographer. He worked for a lot of corporate accounts. He had energy companies, oil companies, people like that. They would hire him to go shoot works for their annual report that they would put out. So a lot of his stuff dealt with oil rigs, oil derricks, and sometimes field work. And it was always really impressive. It was very well done. I think Keith had an enormous sensibility for the stuff that he did. One day I was talking to a mutual friend of ours and he said, well, you know, I know we're working on, you I guess are working on his website. How's that going? I said, man, he is such a great photographer. This other individual was also a working commercial photographer. He said, you know, he said, what makes him so great? He said, I don't know if you've ever realized this, but he said a lot of those things that he shoots when you're in like a field and there's some workers or whatever, he said, sometimes there's interesting things. Like if you're actually take a helicopter out to an oil derrick, but a lot of times it's the equivalent of a parking lot. It's like you've got to make work there. And that was always really fascinating to me because especially doing commercial work, here's somebody that goes out to something that looks kind of like a parking lot, but there's a big pipe sticking out of the ground or whatever. Okay, well, we need to get a great photograph of this. Maybe there's a worker or two that you can bring into the equation somehow, but you've got the client there and you've got probably an art director there. And so there's a lot of pressure in those situations. Now, my friend Keith was very savant about this whole thing. If you were to ask him about it, I don't think he could ever explain it. He was just able to react to what he was given and he had a really natural talent for that. And some people are blessed with that. They don't have to think about it. They don't have to work as hard. It's internalized. It's in their mind, but they know how to react. They know how to get a great shot out of something. They're not thinking of anything different. And I think that's a perfect example of just being able to react to what's around you and make do. There's, in fact, I was going to say there's no over prep. There's barely any prep at all. It's just some people have that ability to show up and not let anything bother them. They get great images every time. I'll give you another example of somebody who was not naturally talented at the beginning, and that would be me. And when I first started out and I started getting really serious about shooting, I, you know, there's this kind of graph that you can draw, I think, for anyone when you get interested in some new skill, whether that's photography, whether that's drawing, whether it's coding, wh whatever it is. You, in the beginning, do something where you're just experimenting and you're messing around and you're just kind of having fun with it. And then you kind of realize, well, wait a minute, maybe I have a little bit of talent for this. Maybe a few people compliment you on something you did. And you think, well, wait a minute, 
I want to get really serious about this. Seth Godin has a great short book on this called The Dip, and it's about this whole creative journey. And so what happens is you start out on this really high level, and you're able to do something that really holds and keeps your interest. And then what happens is you sink, because all of a sudden you're having to learn more, you're having to get more into it, and you are more critical of the work that you're actually doing and then the rest of it is trying to climb out of that dip and if you're going to be successful you will come up the other side and you'll be way stronger than you were at the beginning but for me what i miss is that very beginning because at least when i got really serious about photography there's a certain level of you don't care and you're just experimenting and you're having fun there is no judgment that comes in on that whatsoever i remember the first summer that i started getting heavily into film i was doing a lot of darkroom printing i was really going at it and i live in Texas. It gets really hot here. So a lot of this I would do at night because it was cooler and my apartment would go dark and I would just get like these makeshift lamps and stuff playing with studio light. I had no professional equipment. In fact, I was really broke at the time. And when I finally did have a little bit of money to spend on like used cameras, of course, you know me, I would get like a cheap Roloflex or I would get the Holgas going or whatever. And I wanted to do these medium format images where I was doing maybe double exposure. I was experimenting with color a little bit, but I wanted to work with... Um, a medium format camera. What I didn't realize at the time is the minimum focus distance between the lens and your subject is pretty long on older lenses in general. And so I didn't let that stop me. What, I didn't have any money to go buy another camera. So let's just figure out what we can do. And I remember specifically on the Roloflex, you've got two lenses. You've got the taking lens, which is your, your, the lens at the bottom, which actually hits the film and your viewing lens at the top, but they're not on the same plane. One's on top of the other. So what I would do is I measured that distance out and it's, you know, a little over an inch. And so what I would do is I would position my frame I would hang, I didn't even have filters that fit, and I would hang a close-up filter over the, the viewing lens. I would get everything in focus, and then very carefully I would lift the whole thing up like an inch and a half, and then I would get my image, and it worked. And I didn't care. And people would compliment me on those images because they didn't know what went on behind the scenes. But my point is, is that I wasn't going for perfection. I was just dealing with what I had. So my point here is that as we go on our creative development, we end up sort of becoming our own worst enemy. And that critic comes in and starts telling us that we can't do things or we don't have the right equipment to do things or we're not prepared to do certain things or the lighting's not right or it's cloudy today or it's too bright today. You know, we come up with all the excuses. I think there are some ways around this that we can use some techniques to improve the work that we're doing. And a lot of them just is approach to thinking. But real quick, I want to give a shout out to our awesome sponsor today, who are the folks over at Storyblocks. Storyblocks is the go-to resource for high quality stock footage, animations, they've got music, they've got sound effects, images, all royalty free. You need to check out Storyblocks because this is an invaluable service. They've bailed me out on numerous occasions where I needed additional footage. Maybe there was a drone shot I couldn't get. Storyblocks have a really awesome library and it's really extensive. Sometimes it'll kind of surprise you when you go in and you think, oh, they won't have a clip that suits this need. And then you do some searching and they have many options of clips that will fulfill that exact need. With a Storyblock subscription, you've got access to over 1 million high quality downloadable assets. So you can test all of these. You can try out as many as you need for your projects. Also check out their new tool. It's called Maker. And this is a quote, no experience necessary video editor that is included in the unlimited all access plan and it's really useful for creating assets that are optimized for social media specifically and it's an excellent resource for any content creator. Storyblocks have a variety of plans depending on your needs. All of them are affordable and this is a really awesome way to get access to some beautiful looking footage perfect for your own projects. So head over to the link in the description below this video to learn more and I'm going to give a special shout out and thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. So about six years ago I did a video collaboration with my friend John Free, who is an incredible photographer. He has a great YouTube channel. You guys have probably seen that video. If you haven't, I'll link it up here somewhere. I would definitely go check that out. And the premise was John lives in Los Angeles. I was going to be in Los Angeles. So I called him up and I said, hey, can I get a photography lesson from you? And here's the catch. I want to film it for my YouTube channel. And he was really into the idea, but that's really what it was. And I had my friend Gary who showed up and he kind of helped film it a little bit. We both had cameras, but Gary would film it when the two of us were talking. And what was cool is Gary had taken work workshops with John before and he'd talked to him and this didn't really make the final video but it was interesting because we were out there shooting in Santa Monica and this was kind of like high noon we did stop for lunch but the sun I mean this was in the summer the sun's right above us this is not optimal light you're going to get heavy shadows especially if you're shooting people and we're doing essentially street photography on the beach and I remember at one point Gary asked John he said uh, he said I know we're doing this for you know the sake of learning and 
and for the sake of this video, he said, but when you go out and shoot on your own, do you typically have a time of day you prefer? And John immediately interrupts him and he says, no, he said, no, now you, you, de you deal the hand you're dealt or you work with the hand you're dealt. You don't worry about those things. You just go out and shoot. It's your job as a photographer to make the best of whatever situation you're in. If you've got high contrast, work with high contrast. If you have more beautiful lighting, then work with that, but never argue the moment that you're shooting in. And I feel like John thinks that his role, and I agree with this as a street photographer, is you want to capture life as it's happening and you don't want to try to impact or set that up. And it brought me back around to this whole idea of thinking, because I was thinking of the story the other day about how we end up maybe sabotaging ourselves sometimes because something is not right and we don't feel like we can proceed. And I think that's the perfect way to view it. I think in John's terms, is to realize that that's not our job. Our job is to embrace what we're dealing with and to work with it. And that's something that when I think about that, that helps me a considerable amount. And there's another story that I wanna share with you that helps me even more. About a year after I did that video with John, I started work on the Artist Series, which is, I'll link up to that also. It's a whole playlist of documentaries, that are little mini documentaries, like 10, 12 minutes long, of living photographers. And I got to meet some of my heroes doing that. And it was a really special thing. Anyway, when I was prepping for that, um, there were certain questions that I kind of wanted to ask everyone because I wanted a thread of con continuity to, to kind of go between each one of those little videos. And I would typically ask about creativity, which interestingly led, and I did not plan this, but it led to several people telling me stories about a photograph that they tried to get that they couldn't. And I love that because it's almost like I don't, it's just really cool because it's like they're describing a photo, you can't see it, but they're talking also about the, you know, the fact that they're real human beings and they don't always get it every time. And I think this works into this too. So anyway, my favorite of this was when I was talking to Keith Carter and Keith Carter and I have an enormous amount in common because we both love the history of photography, what came before us. And we were talking about Laycock Abbey. And if you don't know, you've never heard of this, don't know where it is. Henry Fox Talbot, uh, who was the early British photographer discovering the process of doing salt prints. Well, Laycock Abbey is in, this little town, if you are in London and you take a train out towards Bath, it's kind of halfway-ish between. Anyway, you can stop and you can go visit the Abbey that's in all of those famous photographs. This was kind of right around the same time and a little bit later than Louis Daguerre, so the very beginning of photography. And he was talking about getting out, we we're sharing stories about going to Laycock Abbey and what we did, and he was telling me his, and he said, when I got off the train, he said, I got there kind of late at night and the sun was already going down. It was in the winter and so sun sets quite a bit earlier in England, and he said, he got out there and he said he didn't have his glasses on and all of a sudden he said this field he started the ground was moving and he realized it was like you know hundreds of like these black sheep and they were all moving around and so he said I tried to get my camera and I didn't get the picture but he kept talking about wow and he was telling me how he would print it and he was describing this whole process to me and in my mind, that was almost cooler than if he had gotten the shot, at least in that moment, because hearing his enthusiasm of describing it and what could have happened, I think inspires me. And I hope that story inspires you guys too. Uh, go watch his video in the Artist Series. It's fantastic. He talks about it there. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. But I think that is the key to all of this, is as much as we strive for perfection, the ability to realize there's only so much we control and I think the secret to all this is being able to let your guard down a little bit and be experimental with things. This gets really hard when you're on a paying job and it's a commercial photography type situation or a wedding photography type situation. It's easier when you're experimenting, but at the same time, I've had things where I won't give myself permission. There's no client around, but for whatever reason, I come up with excuses. I would love to know what you guys think, so drop me a comment below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until then, later.